It's Finance Friday, another special edition of Money Girl, where I answer your burning money questions. Today's topic comes from Sarah, who says, I'm starting my first real job with benefits soon, and I should have a little money left each month to start investing. I want to make it grow as fast as possible. My question is, how do wealthy people invest their money? Thanks so much for your question, Sarah. While you can invest money in endless ways, I'm going to review the best place wealthy people grow their money, and so can you. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me on episode 859. I'm Laura Adams, an award-winning author, finance spokesperson, money speaker, and founder of the Money Stack newsletter. And I've been hosting the Money Girl podcast for many years with 43 million downloads. If you're getting value from the free content we love creating here, consider submitting a five-star rating or review where you're listening. Maybe it's Apple Podcast or Spotify. And if you have a question you'd like me to cover, leave it on our voicemail at 302-364-0308. You can also send an email and sign up for the free Money Stack newsletter when you visit lauradadams.com. Sarah, I really appreciate your question, and I want to recommend that before you do anything with your extra money, that you know its purpose. For instance, should you save it for emergencies or significant purchases you want to make within a year or two? Maybe it's a car or, you know, some other goal that you have. That's essential for managing hardships like losing your job or paying for unexpected out-of-pocket medical bills. Your emergency savings should never be invested. That's why it's called savings. You don't want to invest it because there is a risk that its value could decline right at the moment you need it. Your emergency money is for potential short-term needs rather than long-term growth. So a good rule of thumb is to keep at least three up to six months worth of your living expenses in a liquid FDIC-insured high-interest savings account. So always fund a cash reserve, you know, with at least $500 or $1,000 at a minimum before becoming an investor. Then you might continue building your emergency fund while simultaneously investing some amount. Now, funds dedicated to your longer-term goals, so things like retiring or buying a home down the road, those are funds that need to be invested so you have growth and beat inflation. And that does mean taking some calculated risk so your balance gets higher returns. So let's talk about where do the wealthy invest? There is certainly more than one place where wealthy people invest their money, but many millionaires and multimillionaires have multiple sources of income. It could be rents, royalties, capital gains, interest, and dividends. But I will say few wealthy people don't have some or even a lot of their money in the stock market. All the jargon and data associated with the stock market can make it feel inaccessible or overwhelming, but I'm going to break it down so you know exactly what wealthy investors do and you can easily replicate it. So the stock market is a generic term for various exchanges where investors buy and sell shares of publicly traded companies like Amazon, Apple, and Google. Different stocks trade on different marketplaces. So they might be the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. These are all electronic systems where different companies uh, will trade. In addition to stocks, you can purchase funds on the market. So buy shares of funds like index funds and exchange-traded funds, which bundle hundreds or even thousands of individual stocks into one investment. I love those because they give you broad diversification, and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. So investing in the stock market is one of the easiest ways to become wealthy if you follow some simple concepts that I'm going to cover. So let's review why the stock market is where the wealthy put their money, and you should too. So what are the advantages of the stock market? While the market might not be the only place to invest, I will say if it's the only place you put your money, it can make you extremely wealthy. So consider the following six advantages of investing in the stock market. Number one is receiving higher returns. 
Over the long term, stocks have outperformed other mainstream investment options. Since the 1920s, the average market return of the S&P 500 has been about 10% per year, and returns since the 1950s have been slightly over 10%. But the average means some years have higher returns and some years have less. The stock market does not rise every year, but it does go up more often than it goes down, which is why we see a nice upward trend over time. Since the stock market returns are tempered by inflation, getting an average annual return of 6% to 7% is a fair assumption when you buy and hold stocks for the long term. However, if you don't hold them for the long term, if you trade in and out of the market frequently, you can expect to earn less due to taxes, commissions, and, you know, just poor market timing. The second advantage of the stock market is being able to invest small amounts. So one of the best aspects of the stock market is that it's available to anyone, even if you don't have much to invest. For instance, one share of the Spider SPDR portfolio S&P 500 ETF, this is a, uh, a particular fund you can buy, costs about $65. However, let's say you only have $50 to invest. Well, you can buy a fractional share of most most ETFs giving you less than a full share. So compared to many other investments like purchasing real estate, angel investing, or starting a business, which requires significant upfront capital, investing in the stock market is incredibly cheap. That makes it easy to start and to increase your wealth slowly over time. Many people, including the wealthy, put money in the stock market using a dollar cost averaging strategy. Dollar cost averaging means you contribute a fixed dollar amount regularly, like monthly or every time you get paid. For example, you could invest $300 a month in an index fund that's made up of a broad range of stocks. And when the value of the fund goes up, your $300 buys fewer shares. And when the fund price declines, your $300 purchases more shares. So that smooths out your risk and allows you to develop a habit of investing no matter how much or little money you have. In addition, there are few transaction fees with stocks and funds. You must open an investing account to buy and sell shares, but there are many platforms that charge zero or even have a selection of no-fee funds. The third benefit of the stock market is becoming a business owner. As I mentioned, stocks or stock funds give you ownership in companies that can grow, increase in value, and pay dividends. Even with a small investment, you become a part owner of one or many companies and share in their profits and growth when you invest in the stock market. That allows you to generate income without the cost, responsibilities, regulations, and liability of starting your own company, hiring workers, and managing staff. Compared to the intense work, skill, and upfront money required to launch your own business, owning stock market companies allows you to be lazy and still earn an excellent return on your investment. Now, who doesn't love that? The fourth benefit is having liquidity. Stocks and various stock funds are highly liquid, which means you can buy and sell them anytime, and you do that through a brokerage account. That's a huge advantage compared to investments like real estate or a business, where your cash could be locked up for years or decades. The ability to turn stock market investments into cash anytime you need it is a terrific benefit. While you can't dictate a stock or fund's share price when you sell it, someone will always be willing to buy it from you. The fifth benefit is getting diversification. It's easy to own diversified investments when you own part of the stock market. That's critical for reducing potential risk. For instance, owning an index fund comprised of a broad swath of companies ensures they aren't correlated or won't move together when economic conditions change. That helps smooth out risk over the long term. For instance, let's say you only own a home. That's your only investment or you only own one technology stock. Changes in the United States housing market or the tech industry could cause your investment portfolio to plummet. However, when you own many different stocks and economic conditions change, some may lose value, some may hold steady, and some will increase, helping your overall portfolio. 
You can diversify on many levels, like your asset classes, like owning stocks, bonds, real estate, and cash. And within your stock assets, you can diversify across company sizes, like large capitalization, mid cap, and small cap, and even sectors and geographies. So the easiest way wealthy investors achieve very broad diversification and cut risk is by purchasing shares of index funds or various exchange-traded funds. And the sixth benefit of the stock market is having tax advantage options. Stock market investments aren't the only ones with potential tax benefits. However, it's super easy to own them inside tax-advantaged accounts like retirement plans, health savings accounts, and 529 college savings plans. Most people build their wealth by purchasing shares through an employer-sponsored retirement account, such as a 401k, 403b, or 457 plan. Or if they're self-employed, they might use an account for small businesses, like a solo 401k or a SEP IRA. Retirement accounts allow your investments to grow tax-deferred in traditional plans or tax-free in Roth plans. Sarah, if your employer offers a retirement plan, that is the best place for you to invest. I recommend signing up and participating right away. I recommend choosing an after-tax Roth option if it's available at work or using a Roth IRA, which is an individual retirement account. And you typically are going to have a menu of investment options to choose from, like index funds and exchange-traded funds. Using a Roth is so great because it allows you to skip taxes on decades of growth in the account because you get to take tax-free withdrawals in retirement. To sum up, there isn't another investment that makes earning a healthy return as easy as buying funds in the stock market. The benefits I've reviewed here aren't the only ones, but they are primary considerations if you want to build wealth as simply as possible. But it's also critical to remember that investing in the stock market, especially in individual stocks versus funds, involves risk. The value of your investments will fluctuate, particularly in the short term. So you should only invest once you have a healthy emergency fund in place and will likely be fine without the invested funds over the next few years. Sarah, congratulations on landing your first job, and I hope this podcast has been helpful to help you set out on the right direction for your investment future. Just a few of these simple guidelines that we've covered today can really set you up for a lifetime of success and wealth. Before we go, here's a quick reminder to subscribe to The Money Stack. That's my weekly newsletter when you visit lauradadams.com. The newsletter is filled with money tips, tools, news, challenges, things I enjoy, and a lot more. You can subscribe for free or support the show by becoming a paid member and also getting access to live educational events. That's all for now. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is a quick and dirty tips podcast, and I want to thank our amazing team. Steve Rickyberg, audio engineers the show. Brandon Gaitis is our director of podcasts. Holly Hutchins is our digital operations specialist. Morgan Christensen is our advertising operations specialist. And Davina Tomlin is our amazing marketing and publicity associate.